handful of places left on Earth where humans and animals live in complete harmony. In the heart of Africa, in Kenya, lies the Maasai Mara. I came here one year ago while building 100 wells throughout Africa, where I met the Maasai tribe, an ancient nomadic group that have preserved their culture and way of living for centuries. But just like we see in other places across the globe, greed and human ignorance pose the biggest threat to the natural world. Animals find their habitat threatened by human activities. Plastic has reached every corner of the globe. This threatens everyone. One million animals around the world are now at risk of extinction. But there is a glimmer of hope. This is the Maasai Mara Wildlife Conservancies Association, a group of local Maasai people that are doing everything they can to preserve what's left through a combination of traditional methods and modern day techniques like data science and analysis. Ridding poaching almost entirely and protecting the remaining natural resources. But there are now more pressing challenges being faced that nobody has talked. So Dan and Darren went back to the Maasai Mara to see how we can further help this community. And not far from the campsite, Dan and Darren came across something extraordinary. Oh this is Elizabeth, one of the endangered white rhinos the rangers protect. What a beautiful animal. It's unbelievable. Like it. The power, you can like feel it. 27 years you've yep. been with these animals. Yeah. yeah. So they're like children to you. Yes. These rangers work day and night to ensure the protection of these endangered animals. And because they are all local Maasai people, they have a deeper understanding of who they are as shepherds of the wildlife. When we arrived at the campsite, we met with Daniel, the CEO of the Maasai Conservancies, to find out what other challenges they are facing. To look at the last 40 years, scientific information shows a decline of wildlife numbers and nearly 40% of the wildlife have been lost. And this was as a result of habitat destructions in particular. The downfall in the Mara all started 60 years ago when the land was divided and given to the Maasai people for private ownership. This led to investors buying the land for development and exploitation of resources. Many Maasai had no choice but to accept the money, abandoning their ancestral heritage, and putting the habitat that millions of Maasai and animals rely on at risk of being destroyed. To combat this problem, the conservancies came up with a plan to incentivize landowners to lease their land to the Maasai Conservancy in return for a monthly payment so that they could preserve their territory and traditions. This idea of conservation is just strengthening our relationship with wildlife and nature. That those people who are considered as custodians of wild animals are now benefiting. In the last 18 years, more than 24 conservancies have been formed in the Maasai Mara, allowing for the Maasai tribe and wildlife to flourish together. But Tarn, the lead project manager for the conservancy, told us that natural disasters and weather events like climate change have proven to be the biggest problem that the Maasai now faces. Sadly, we've had some really unexpected weather events. We've had massive flooding events. We've lost property in the form of tourism camps. And more importantly, we've lost lives from some of the rangers who work out here to protect this, this valuable ecosystem. We've seen quite devastating uh, floods. As they are coming back from their normal patrols. They found that water level has risen in the river. So they were actually trying to cross the vehicles. Was toppled over by the uh, strong currents of the water and out of the seven rangers, two rangers lost their lives. They lost their lives in the line of duty, protecting our precious natural resources. We're trying to find a way to support the affected families. Both rangers had large families who they provided for on a daily basis and their tragic death has now left the families without a source of income. Hopefully in the future we can have an alert system to avoid these sorts of tragedies ever happening again. One way the conservancies are looking to combat this problem is through the installation of weather stations. Weather stations are crucial for doing the ecosystem monitoring work and ultimately being able to make informed ecosystem management decisions that go into the conservation effort here. Another struggle is the complete lack of electricity at the ranger base camps, which makes basic tasks like charging a flashlight and powering the current weather stations extremely difficult. 
This all goes in to form the backbone infrastructure that these ranges need to be able to do effective ecosystem monitoring and ecosystem management work. And that's been a big shift in how conservation has worked in this landscape over the past 20 years. It feels like we're at an inflection point in time right now. And if we don't do something about this, it may be lost forever. We want to do everything we can to make a long lasting impact on the conservation in the Maasai Mara. So Darren met up with Michelle, the president from our long-term partners, Give Power. They have been working with the conservancies in generating clean energy for the rangers. Give Power will be supplying the whole ranger station with clean energy to give light at night. And most importantly, power the weather stations and sensors to predict environmental changes and events to protect the Maasai people. And furthermore, expand the protected Maasai Mara areas. So I got very excited about the opportunity to bring power to some of these ranger stations. We also got the opportunity to create a digital connection to be able to transmit important information that they gather in the field to a system that would allow us to start creating carbon credits. Carbon credits are bought by companies to offset their carbon footprint and allows them to release a certain amount of greenhouse gases if the Conservancy gets additional weather stations. They will be able to sell the carbon credits to companies that need it in order to continually expand and protect the Maasai Mara. In addition to the seven weather stations and solar grids that we installed, Darren is just about to surprise Daniel with even more. Daniel, we're going to pay for five more weather stations. I have no words to express gratitude and the Mara community. On, I'm speaking on their behalf. Thousands and thousands of those landowners who are not here, they are going to be very, very happy. Thanks to all the work that has been done on this project, this will make it possible for the rangers to be well equipped for their fight to protect the wildlife. The conservancies will also be able to generate their own income from the carbon projects, allowing for enough funds to lease out more lands. That will provide larger areas for the wildlife to thrive, as well as offer the Maasai people the opportunity to live as they have done for centuries. We are also ensuring that the new generations will have to continue what we have started because it is also actually changing their livelihoods. It is actually providing income to thousands and thousands of households. It's a blessing to us. Even after our donation and Daniel's immense gratitude for this to all become a reality, the Maasai Mara still needs an additional five weather and power stations, which totals to the amount of $100,000. And that is where we need your help, so please click the donate button below. Every single dollar makes a difference. Before Dan and Darren left, they went to visit the families that lost husbands and fathers in the massive flooding. Daniel then explained that Beast Philanthropy will be donating enough money to cover their living expenses for an entire year, lifting this massive financial burden off their shoulders. The Rangers paid the ultimate sacrifice to protect and preserve this land. It's extremely important that we all do what we can to support the organizations making a massive change in the Mara. We have a short opportunity to take action and do something about it before it's too late. It's thanks to all of you watching and donating that we can do projects like this with organizations that are protecting our planet and its nature. So again, please click the donation button so that we can hit our goal of $100,000 to complete this project.